Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usha Motuzaita Pinkavichina. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Let's start episode 697 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. Today we'd like to talk about how to teach in an organ studio where one student is playing with one finger only and another rather well. Osha, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I think you are talking about experience working with our students in our Undamari studio. Right. Over the years, we had uh, very varied levels of skills uh, in our studio students. Uh, so, so it might be, let's say, very advanced student who can play almost concert level repertoire or another student could be let's say just beginner and not only beginner but barely can read music at all with, without any keyboard experience what are some other examples Osha? some of them actually graduated from the musical school so have uh, great abilities but so some of them started to learn music as a children and some haven't had any musical background and even don't read music well. The challenge, of course, is not picking the right repertoire for each of them. Every, stu- every teacher understands that, right? You have to adjust your expectations and your repertoire to each student according to their level and maybe even their taste too uh, and we are doing that every every year what is different for us is because we uh, are organizing a joint group um, recital at the end of school year and um, in this recital we have to show results so it's easy to show results um, with an advanced student who can almost play concert repertoire repertoire rather well. But with beginners, it's already complicated, right, Usha? Yes, it's quite complicated, you know. But I think uh, you do pretty well job, you know, selecting repertoire and teaching them and final results usually is better than I expected. Thank you, Osha. It's not always easy because you have to consider your audience also when selecting repertoire for concert. What kind of organ or audience will come and uh, what kind of overall concert experience they will have. So, yeah, we are constantly facing those challenges. And in the past, we've been even charging people for concert tickets. So these were paid events. And if you charge tickets, people expect high level. But even now, um, when we no longer have uh, paid the tickets during... Um, concerts at our church uh, on the organ it doesn't mean we don't strive for the highest possible level right Osha? Sure we still do our best right so one of the ways to do that is to make sure students prepare well in advance because sometimes they can play rather well during rehearsals, but they can freeze during um, live performance. 
Yes, and we had that in the past more than once. I was surprised that um, people with s music school experience uh, in the past can actually freeze. With beginners, it's kind of understandable. They lose their place in the score. But it's strange when, when somebody who, who has probably several years of experience in music schools can actually stop in the middle of their place of the piece and don't know what to do. Yeah, so o overall it takes a lot of patience you know, teaching people like that. And I think it's much, much harder than teaching, you know, professional students. What do you think? Would you agree with me? Definitely. The, the best feeling I have with our studio is when I can already see or feel that the student is already swimming without my help. Uh, and from that point onward, I can feel that they will prepare for the concert rather well. Yes, and yet another problem we encounter is that some of our students don't have an access or regular access to an instrument. Don't you agree? Yeah, yes, they love the organ, but not everybody is, you know, fortunate to have an organ at home. Very few people are. Or even a piano or any type of keyboard. So in the past... Um, we made some paper-based resources for them to tape and glue together and they would have a life-sized um, organ manuals from paper and organ pedals from paper too. Do you think that works? Yes, actually that helped for some people if, you know, if we really did their homework. Because it's tricky. You have to imagine sounds in your head when you're pressing paper uh, keys. And for us, it's easy. We can actually practice without paper keyboard. We can practice on the table. And we do that all the time at, in hotels when we're traveling. But um, but for amateurs like that, they, they don't have inner hearing developed. And they cannot hear what they are pressing right now. Yes, another challenge is to know how to manage time, you know, during the studio time. Because, uh, you know, the attendance is not required. So sometimes we know in advance who will show up and sometimes we don't. So we never know, you know, how many students will we have and how we will have to divide our time. And since we just love to talk, sometimes even maybe too much, sometimes we are short on time. So when I just take, you know, the lead and say, okay, now you play, now play. You know, let's talk and let's play. Yeah, it has to be a delicate balance between talking and letting others uh, play because because if you don't say anything and just say do it again, do it again, do it again, it might work, but um, not not always. Sometimes you do need to explain things or demonstrate things. And that means that student is standing or, or just watching you, not working. Um, the other thing is when you explain something... Um, about the organ and you you tell stories and sometimes those stories might take too much time too so I'm really glad Osh um, is joining me for a few years now as a teacher in Undamari studio and uh, she can feel better this time that we have and uh, can distribute that time among students more evenly I simply you know <laughs> look at the watch and count how many people have played and how many still have to play. Uh, again, 
another thing um, that is a challenge is when you have, um, let's say, too few st students uh, to come, li like two or three. So, like three students and two teachers. It's almost like a private lesson. <laughs> right, Osha? Oh, yes. It's so funny. It's a weird feeling. And um, then usually what we do is actually teach them and uh, we end, uh, you know, uh, let them let them do uh, their fullest work. But obviously they cannot play for, for two hours, right? Three students. So they, they leave us time to practice and record. Yes, that's a nice thing. Not often happen, though. All right, so let's recap. If you're facing um, uh, this situation where students are very at level, you have to uh, actually adjust to their level and pick pieces uh, very appropriately to their skill level. What else do you have to do, Osha? Plan program and time accordingly. And I hope uh, if you're teaching somebody like we are, you can organize a group recital at the end of the year or even at the end of the semester sometimes you can do that. It's it's a really great opportunity to, to show students the practical application of their work. And they actually enjoy playing it in public, right? Yes, very much, because we can invite friends and family. Yes. So please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching and practice materials for every area of organ playing thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course, you will get the first month for free too. You can cancel anytime. If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check out our page on Buy Me A Coffee platform. Find out more at buymeacoffee.com slash organduo.